Shop, Rob from Woodsley Summercraft here. Today I've got this piece of walnut on the lathe. It was December 5th that I cut a log that I was given into uh, pieces and blanks and I brought one of the blanks downstairs into my workshop and uh, rough turned that into a live edge bowl. It's approximately 10 inches around by about 3-4 inches deep um, but it was green and it was very wet and I microwaved it and 25 days later it's dry enough to turn. It is 7% moisture roughly and that to me is good enough to turn. Um, it's actually, what I, my process is I put it in a black bag after I rough turn it and then every day I microwave it twice, 55 seconds each time, let it steam off a little bit and then before I think it's going to crack I shove it back in the black bag and I leave it. The next day I go down again and it's condensed in the bag and all the bag's wet, right? So I turn the bag inside out, microwave the bowl twice, 55 seconds at a time, bring it out, let it steam off a little bit, put it back in the bag and then the next day I just keep repeating that process and I weigh it as well and I write down on the bowl what it weighs and eventually it gets to a point where it kind of the weight stays the same and the moisture is very dry is there's no moisture in it or very little um, tends to stay in the base a little bit longer because of the tenon it's a little bit deeper or thicker at the base but generally speaking it's about a one inch to inch and a quarter all the way around I try and keep it about the same thickness all the way around when I initially turn it. I don't pay attention to finishing because it, it's going to be refinished anyway so the cut doesn't really matter as far as being particularly smooth. As long as you've got a even thickness from the edge all the way down through to the base then it should dry relatively evenly. Um, so we, having said all that we've got it on the lathe now and I had the mark in the center so it's centered. I've got it wedged into a piece of wood with a piece of cloth on it so it's jammed into the chuck and uh, on slow speed you can see it's turning not too bad. The, more, the tenon that I put on the base was a big size tenon so now I can turn that down, true it up, turn it down to the size that I want for the chuck to hold it in, finish the back side of the bowl and then turn it around and hollow it out to the thickness that I'm looking for. Now usually about 3 8 half inch at the most, um, maybe even smaller than that. Depends on the piece and how it's turning. So I'm now going to do that. I'm going to turn the tenon down to the size I want and then we'll get moving and get this bowl finished 25 days after it was green. So I've got this caliper that I'm using today so that I don't wreck my, my measuring calipers. I got in trouble over that the other day, somebody mentioned it. So I'm actually going to be using this from now on, although I'm not going to be touching it. I'm just going to use this a lot more than I have been. I'm going to bring that down to this size. revealing a little bit more of this crotch feature as I cut away some of this wood revealing some more crotch feature there so that's nice okay so I'm not gonna go any smaller with the tenon than that but I do need to shape it a little bit better okay so that's true I just got to finish this edge here actually warped more than I realized which is to be expected but uh, just more than I realized now 
I'm watching the shadow up here as I'm cutting down here. Be careful not to blow out the uh, the bark. Okay, so that is now chewed up. It's got some tool marks. It just needs sanding. A little bit of tear out here, but it's starting to get a bit thin there, so I don't want to turn too much more away. So I'm going to get this outside sanded, turned around, and we'll get back to hollowing the inside out. Okay, so this has been sanded down to 400 grit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal this with a cellulose sanding sealer from Mylands, and then uh, we'll move on from there. Right, so now we've got it turned around in the chuck and we are ready to hollow this out. Now it's already pretty thin there, so we've got to be careful how we approach this. So that is the turning complete. Now we've just got to do the sanding. So uh, I'm going to sand it from uh, probably from 80. I'll start at 80 just to get rid of a few of these tool marks. And I'll work my way up to uh, 400, the same as the other one. And then I'll be using um, cellulose sanding sealer. All right, I've sanded this to 150 grit. And there is a little bit of raised grain in a couple of spots on the crotch feature there and a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sanding sealer and I'm going to sand seal all the inside, let it soak in, and then let it stiffen up those fibers and then I'll continue sanding. Um, I'll start back at um, 220 and then I'll continue my way up through the grits to uh, 400 grit. So I'm going to take the Mylan sanding sealer, which is cellulose based, wipe it all over the inside of this bowl. Alright, this has been sanded to 400 grit. I'm going to apply the sanding sealer now over the entire inside of the bowl. Several coats until uh, it's soaked up as much as it wants, in the end grain especially. You can just assist that to dry with a paper towel, a little bit of friction. Just dry that a little bit quicker. Now I'm just going to take a scouring pad just to denip this and bring it back to an even look.
not always easy when you're doing a live edge bowl. So I'm going to use Yorkshire grit on this even though it is a bit difficult with a live edge bowl but it just gives you the great results regardless and you can work it by hand as well to some extent still going to give us that look that we're looking for you just got to be careful around the edges not to put too much pressure on it you watch your fingers don't get caught being careful with your fingers we'll move on to putting some microfine on this as well bringing the speed back down low before I turn the lathe back on So now I'll be putting some Hampshire Sheen gloss on this to give it some shine and wipe it all around the inside of the bowl. And there it is whittled down to a nub, which I'll take off with a uh, chisel. I've put a couple of little decorative lines there. It didn't perfectly center, so it's a little bit higher here than on this side, but it doesn't matter. It will sit nice and flat when I, when I put it on the table. So uh, I'm going to remove that with a chisel now, sand it by hand to 320, and then we'll get a little bit of sanding sealer on there and finish it, and this bowl We'll be finished. I'll put my uh, logo on there too, the WS logo on there, and this bowl will be finished. A light tap, and we'll remove that. We'll have to hand sand it afterwards. So there is the Live Edge Walnut. Uh, crotch section bowl, uh, the tenon has been removed and my logo has been somewhat put on and uh, that was I think 25 days after cutting a fresh log to finished bowl so I'm quite happy with that. Um, drying it with the microwave certainly works. I've got two more bowl blanks sitting over there, a, a maple and a walnut. They were also dried in about the same amount of time, about 25 days. Uh, less than a month, so that's uh, that's pretty good going. I also just rough cut some bigger bowl blanks. They're about 14 inches around by about five inches deep. They're an inch and a half thick, so I'm going to actually let them sit in shavings. Who knows how long that's going to take? It could take a couple of years, but uh, maybe we'll speed up a little bit with the microwave at some point. But uh, anyway, there's this bowl, this week's project. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Don't forget, if you like this project, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, that's okay. Um, I appreciate you guys watching regardless. Um, take care now.
shot rock from wood, wood. Uh, 